So here in this shloka, he is explaining what is the absolute tattva, the param tattva, vadanti tat tattva vidas. Who is explaining this supreme absolute truth? Those persons who are called tattva vida. That means they are the knowers. They have realized this absolute truth, absolute substance. And what is their description of this absolute substance? He is saying vadanti. They have explained it to be yaj uh, jnanam advayam. Vadanti tat tattva vidas tattvam yaj jnanam advayam. Here the term advay jnan is used. Advai means non-dual. Dvai means two. And Advai means not two. Or in other words, one. So, Advai Gyan. Uh, this absolute truth, this absolute supreme substance is a non-dual conscious entity. Con conscious being. Uh, complete Gyan, knowledge. And it is non-dual, meaning that there is only this one supreme absolute tattva and there are not any other besides this. So the whole existence of this material cosmic manifestation and everything that exists within the entire creation is actually this one absolute supreme substance advai gyan paratattva supreme absolute non-dual truth. But yet, we see within this material world, we see so many differences and varieties of objects within this world. All the different entities within this world, living entities and non-living, animate and inanimate objects within this world. And there are so many varieties, unlimited millions and trillions of varieties of objects within this world. So it does not appear that it is all one. It appears that it is very different. But yet, everything within existence is described by those who have seen the Absolute Truth as Advai Gyan, uh, non-dual knowledge. But they have explained that that Supreme Absolute Truth from whom everything that we see has emanated is viewed by these seers of the Absolute Truth in three different features. Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavan Iti Shabdyate. They have described that that one non-dual absolute truth from whom everything has come, Janmadhyasya Yataha, as Gurudev, Srila Gurudev is going to describe the first slok of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it begins with these words, huh? Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Janmadhyasya Yataha. That means the source, the absolute source from which everything has come, everything has emanated. So what is the nature of that absolute truth? Uh, Bhagavan Iti Shabdhyate. The terminologies are used to describe that absolute truth. Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Although he is one, but yet he has three aspects, three features. Brahman, Brahmeti, meaning that just as we see the sun in the sky, we can use a material example the rishis have given to understand. The sun in the sky has so many extended rays coming from it. So these rays are the very sun itself. In one sense we can say the sun rays are the sun. Because the sun rays are emanating from the sun and they are in quality, they are none different than the sun. So, in the same way, the Supreme Absolute Truth has the transcendental aspect called Brahman, which means that He, uh, the Supreme Advai Gyan, that Supreme Conscious Being, He is all pervading throughout His entire creation. He Himself, in the form of His. Brahma Jyoti, 
like rays, transcendental rays. And Paramatma, he is not only all-pervading throughout his creation, but just like the sun is all-pervading throughout the universe, yet we also see, we also experience individually <clears throat> that we can feel the sun on our own head. Or if you put so many pots of water, and each pot can reflect the sun, the sun globe itself. So in the same way, Paramatma means that that Advait Gyan, Paratatva, is personally present everywhere. Not only in his uh, non-dual uh, aspect, Nirvishesh, without any varieties, the Brahma Jyoti effulgence, but also he is present personally uh, within every single atom within the creation and within the heart of every living being within the creation. So that is called Paramatma, the transcendental super soul, supreme soul, present everywhere. But, uh, in the same way as the sun globe is situated in one place within the sky, in, within the universe, and from that one source, the sun globe, all these other features extend in the same way that Advait Gyan Paratattva, he is situated uh, as Bhagavan, the supreme absolute personality of Godhead, who has transcendental form, qualities, paraphernalia, dham, associates. So just as within the sun globe, uh, there is a personality known as the sun god, <coughs> who is dominating the entire planet, and whose energies are the very existence of the sun and the sun rays. So in the same way, the Absolute Truth is also seen as the Supreme, Independent Personality of Godhead, Supreme, Absolute Bhagavan. And He is described by the Rishis, Aishwaryasya Samagrasya, Viryasya Yashashashriya, Jnana Vairagya Yoschaiva, Tannam Bhaga Itingina. That He has transcendental opulences and qualities especially six in number, Aishwarya, complete, absolute wealth and power, Virya, complete potencies and shaktis and energies, unlimited, Parasya Shaktir, Vividhai Vishruyate, uh, in many, many varieties of potencies he has, unlimited varieties, Aishwaryasya, Samagrasya, Viryasya, Yashasa Shriya, he has complete fame, yasha, his glories and his fame extend everywhere. Shriya, he has complete beauty, uh, he is transcendental form and his transcendental qualities are extremely attractive and there is no one and nothing within his creation as beautiful as him. He possesses this opulence of beauty in full, fullness. Uh, Viryasya yashasa shriyam Jnana Vairagya Yoschaiva. He has all knowledge of everything. Every single nook and corner of his entire creation, at every single moment, he knows everything everywhere. And Vairagya, he is also transcendentally detached from everything. He exists in himself, completely independent, swarat, from his creation. So this Divine Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan, uh, is the transcendental source and the topmost limit of the Paratattva. But those who have realized the, the Absolute Truth have realized the Absolute Truth in these three features. Similarly, just like when those who are observing a mountain from a distance, if they are very far away, oh, the mountain may appear just like some hazy form, in the distance. Then if they approach the mountain closer and closer, then they will see that, oh, the mountain has very specific shape, very specific colors, and there are some different uh, shapes uh, upon the mountain itself also. But then when he finally comes directly to the mountain, he sees that, oh, here on the surface of the mountain are very beautiful forests, very beautiful forest animals, so many entities are there. So in the same way, those who realize the Absolute Truth, from somewhat of a distance, 
They only realize the Brahman aspect of the Absolute Truth. Those who come a little bit closer, they realize the Paramatma aspect of the Supreme Truth. And those who come the closest of all, they can realize that the Supreme Paratattva, Advait Gyan Paratattva, is a transcendental divine personality of Godhead. And they understand Him in His personal feature. So the great sages, the topmost realized souls within the universe, they have proclaimed by their transcendental realization, such as Lord Brahma Ji himself, when he had this realization of Bhagavan Sri Krishna in the beginning of the creation, then he composed these prayers of Brahma Samhita. And he described that absolute truth Thank as you. Ishwara Parama Krishna Sachidananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govita Sarvata. Sundar Gopal, can you explain something in brief? This in easy process. Very good. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshudun militam jena tasmai shi gudave namaha Vancha kalpa tarubhyascha kipa sindubhya evacha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha This particular topic is sometimes a little bit challenging. And one may wonder, what is the need to <coughs> consider it carefully? The reason why this subject matter is so important and forms the very essence of Srimad Bhagavatam is because it's an explanation of the nature of reality. Without being able to understand what this world is about, and whether anything exists beyond this world, it will be impossible to ascertain the purpose of life. What is the ultimate goal of life? What is existence for? So, this particular question has been considered for many thousands of years by different persons. Some, for instance, think that there is no such thing as an absolute truth. We're bound in a world of relativity. Others accept that there is an absolute truth, but that this absolute truth is impersonal. So, for instance, physicists today, they consider that the only absolute are the laws of physics, which are impersonal. Still others, they accept that there is an absolute truth, and that Absolute truth is endowed with personality, but that that absolute truth is many, not one. What does Srimad Bhagavatam say? Vadanti tat tatva vidas tatvam yajjnanam advayam. Tatvam refers to paratatva, the absolute truth. What are the characteristics of that paratatva? Jnanam advayam. Jnanam means conscious. This indicates clearly that the Absolute Truth has personality. Advayam, non-dual. We can think of non-dual as non-plural because Srimad Bhagavatam explains that this Absolute Truth is not two, but it's not also not three, not four, not many. In other words, it is one. But what exactly does this mean? It means that everything that exists in this world or beyond our perception has no existence separate or independent of the Supreme Lord. This is the meaning of non-dual. Now, if you consider this idea carefully, certain objections may come to mind. Shri Jiva Goswami discusses these in his in his Sat Sandarbha, particularly in Tattva Sandarbha. 
The first one, svagat paid. The Sanskrit word is not so important. It's the concept that you need to un that we need to understand. Svagat paid is the objection that if the absolute truth is endowed with personality, then there must be some plurality or some difference making many rather than just one. This idea comes from the fact from our experience in this world. In this world, we are, we're only accustomed to seeing and experiencing material form. And as soon as you have material form, you have plurality. For instance, if I cut my hair, the hair becomes detached from my body and is a separate entity, separate from myself. Even more so, my very self is actually separate from who I really am. Because the human body dies, all bodies simply perish after some time, but the soul remains. So these difficulties with material form give rise to this potential, to this objection that if God is a person, then that absolute truth cannot be one. However, Srila Jiva Goswami explains that the form of Sri Krishna, the absolute truth, is not material. Om Satchidananda Rupaya Krishnaya. This is declared in the Vedas. The form of the absolute truth is made of Sat, Chit and Ananda. Raso Vaisaha. It is the essence, it is a condensed form of sweetness. So to explain this idea, Srila Jiva Goswami gives the analogy of a figurine made of sugar. If you like, you can think of a, of a chocolate angel. The whole angel is made of chocolate, one substance. It's made of sweetness from beginning to from top to bottom, and yet it has form. So Sri Krishna has form, qualities, variety, but it is made of one spiritual substance, raso vaisaha, condensed rasa. The second objection that may come to mind is we see that the absolute truth is sometimes we see Krishna, but sometimes various other expansions such as Ram, Nishinga, Varaha, Matsya and so on. These different manifestations of the absolute truth appear quite different from each other. They look different for one. So one may think, well here there's variety. There's no, there's plurality. Here Srila Jiva Goswami tries to, uh, Srila Jiva Goswami explains or refutes this objection by giving the analogy of the moon. There is only one moon, but at various phases that moon will appear different. Sometimes it won't, sometimes it will look as if there is no moon. Sometimes it will be full. And at various points in between, it will be either waxing or waning. But we know that it is, it is the same moon. So also these various avatars and expansions of Sri Krishna, they display certain particular qualities that exist fully in, this, in the Absolute Truth, Sri Krishna. The third possible objection is called Vijatiya Ved. This is maybe the objection that would immediately come to mind, um, come to the mind of anyone considering this topic. It is the objection that if you look around you, you see so many different things that appear to be separate from each other and that appear to be separate from Krishna or the Absolute Truth. We see different living entities. We see um, the material world, which is energy in flux and which manifests as various objects around us. These things appear to be separate from each other, to be separate from us, and to our material minds appear to be separate from Krishna. Here Srila Jiva Goswami explains that the first point that must be considered is that everything in this creation and everything beyond this material creation is at all times fully under the control of the Supreme Absolute Truth. 
Not a blade of grass moves without the, the will of the Supreme Lord. Also, it may be said that if two objects share the same origin and their functions do not conflict with each other, then they may be considered to be one. In this world, it may appear sometimes that there is conflict, but from an ultimate vantage point, there is actually no conflict at all. Everything is perfectly directed by the Supreme Lord. There appears to be only there only appears to be conflict when we see that certain things don't cater perfectly for our sense enjoyment. And this gives us the idea that there is conflict in this world, when in fact everything is orchestrated beautifully and perfectly according to the sweet will of the Supreme Lord. <coughs> imagine, imagine if all manifestations from one's own body were perfectly under one's control at all times. Imagine if during a kirtan you were dancing and a bead of sweat fell from your forehead or from your arm. If you could stop that bead of sweat from hitting the ground, you could make it turn around and come straight back at you and enter into the pore of your body, of your arm or your head. You would have full control of that bead of sweat and it could be considered that it's known different from you. This is not the case with us, but it is the case with the Supreme Lord. Countless universes like beads of sweat emanate from all the pores of his body. In fact, they they come out, they expand. So many wonderful creations happen within those beads of sweat. And then, by the will of the Supreme Lord, they come back again and enter again into his body. Such is the, is the power, the potency of the Supreme Lord. Now this particular topic is so important. Srila Gurudev has mentioned that anyone who actually realizes this topic, it's easy to speak about it, but one who can actually perceive it in their life, they are at once a pure Vaishnav. Because they'll see that everything is connected, is everything belongs to the Supreme Lord, and it will be impossible for such a person to try to enjoy anything in this world. And that's exactly why Srimad Bhagavatam begins with this subject. The whole of Srimad Bhagavatam discusses this, and the whole of this first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam discusses the same topic matter. Very deep subject, but you should know even something. We see in this world unlimited jivas, unlimited pieces of life. Also in jiva jagat, oh, unnumberable. In the variable jivas, you cannot count. Their nature, their all these things, we cannot imagine. And in transcendental world, Nanda Baba, Jasoda Maya, Dam Siddham, Subal, Madhumangal, oh, so many sakhas. And also, uh, Millions of gopis are there. But in here it is has been told, Advaigyan, only one. Why told? They are not separate, there, there is no separate existence. Eh? Independent existence. No. All depends on Krishna. In transcendental world, all expansion by his own Shakti, Chit Shakti, Antaranga Shakti. Jivas coming from all Jiva Shakti. And in this Maya Jagat, so many varieties by Maya that we see. But any of them had no independent 
existence and that is called atvaikya now bhaktivinoda thakur doing pranam jat kripaya pravitto asmi granth sangrahe tam gaur parshad bande damo darshwaru and praying to sarup damo who has inspired me to inspire me to write all these things to make a garland of shrimad bhagavatam first is spelling janma dasya jata anvay vyat anvay adi tarasya this thing they have explained <coughs> krishna is one without second and his shakti power is one without second that shakti is called antaranga shakti ladini shakti or chit shakti different names but only one shakti tatasa shakti and jit maya shakti are not different but when chit shakti ladini shakti antaranga shakti he is transformed me to millions of jivas unlimited jiva then it is called tatasa shakti and when this material world manifesting then that very shakti is called according to his function maya shakti and in this world we are in maya and there is prominence of maya so we think that maya shakti is here if we will tell maya shakti for radhika oh then something misunderstanding may come but actually maya is called sarup shakti antaranga shakti maya means power shakti so how this world came janva dasya so many meanings but in general meaning he is telling sarup shakti antaranga shakti of krishna when he creates anu ji not creates but he is transformed into jiva shakti then he is called tatasa jiva shakti who that shakti sarup shakti by function and chaya prakash bharanga maya shakti like shadow shadow of sarup shakti oh he creates all these things then she is called bhairanga shakti then there are so many shakti no one shakti so many functions by function it has then shakti and shakti man to krishna and his power there is duality no real there are shakti shakti mato avedha no dual only one so he had jiva shakti it turns out into jiva jagat and maya shakti in anvay what anvay direct direct his maya shakti he has created manifested all this world of variety of of stool ling sarir and nature and so many things but one thing very wonderful strange jeev part of and parcel of krishna he chit conscious ha huh? conscious 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 how it is possible 
that he will be binded by Maya? How? Chit is more superior than Achit. So it is not possible, but wonderful. Oh, by this illusory Maya. Brahma, even Shankar, they can be what? Bewildered. We cannot, uh, anyone cannot map uh, shakta hai gaharai. One can measure it. Oh, it's deepness of Krishna. So, by this illusory Maya, she has covered the soul with his thul and lingshari to gross subtle body. Though we are not this body, but now what thinking? Oh, I am this body. So this is wonderful thing. And it is due to the Shakti of Krishna. Why it can become? Krishna has created or his Anu Chaitanya E.G. He had given them a very valuable thing that is called independence. Independence. And told them, if he will properly use, then he will come to me and serve me and be happy. But if you will misuse, then I will give you punishment. So we should try not to misuse our independence, but really we have did and for this we are in our prison. Purush, Pragati, Mahatattva. There are 28 tattva, not separate existence, but these are, in this, some are my, in this, eight, 28, Gya, Gyamani Jiva Tattva, who knows? Independence is there. Jeev does not know anything. How created this world? Covered with Maya. So, Krishna knows everything. So, he, here, word is Abhigya. He knows everything. What Brahma, Shankar and other does not know. He is served by his Sarup Shakti, Radhika. And that is why he is Purna, Purnam Adha, Purnam Midam, Purnath Purnam Uchyate. Krishna is infinity. And he is always complete. 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 And Swara, there is none to control him. Independent. Quite independent. He has <laughs> mercifully inspired or what? Manifested Adi Kavi, that is Brahma. It may be told Sukadeva Goswami. It may be told so many things. But here, Brahma. And what he told in Chatushloki Bhagavat Srimad Bhagavatam, 
and by his mercy he realized Brahma, all these things. And then he manifested Vedas, unlimited knowledge. In this Ved Gyan, oh, very learned persons also, they become bewildered. They cannot understand. Here Sarga. Sarga means Srishti, creation. Three kinds of creation. Chit Sarga, Jeeva Sarga, Jada Sarga. Three. Chit Sarga, transcendental world. Beginning from Vaikunt, and Golo of Vrindavan. Nand Baba Jasoda Maya, Sakha, Gopis. There are trees, creepers, mountain, rivers, everything are Satchidananda. Jatkinchi Trinigul Vaki Katamukham Goste Samastanghita Sarvananda Mukunda Daitang Lila Nukulam Param Shastre Devo Muhur Muhur Nishtang Tam Jancha. Brahma Deva Pishas Pihan Tato Sarvambaya. Everything is transcendental. Here he is giving the example, something, Kinchi, not fully. In this world there is no example of Chit Sarga, transcendental world, nothing, but something. Agni, Agni means fire. Have you seen fire? Fire? Have you seen? I have not seen fire. When fuel is given, then flames and fuel and some dark smoke is seen. Smoke is fire? Are woods are fire? Our flames are fire. What is fire? Fire is Shakti, power. You can receive. So, like transcendental things are like fire. Sometimes Krishna comes. We see him. Even Vrindavan descends. Fortunate she was the seed. Like fire, take a their slide. Matches. Matches. Are two stones. stones. Are two wood. By ghasan. By stone by stone. Fire will come. So by any reason especially Bindu, bhakta vidon vinodartham krishna ka, comes only to please his, please his devotees and so many things he does so this is the example of fire for that so agni always alakshit not seen, but sometimes by any reason it is seen. Chit Vyapa transcendental. In transcendental Golok Vrindavan always there. But in this world like fire comes sometimes. With Krishna like Ramchandra comes, like Nishing Dev sometimes comes. Time to time comes. And Jiva Sarga, the example, oh, some little like water. That is fire, that is, Jiva are like water. Too cold, then it will freeze and become ice, then become hard. And if you throw, fracture will come, injury. 
and you can if you are so thirst, thirsty then you can suck it as i ask you very sweet no? so when it is hard then its naturality goes away nature goes away is become hard and when it is in nature own nature then it is liquid form so jeev now <coughs> oh he transcendently nitas kinkar of krishna jore so bhai nitya prash and he is always serving krishna and he is happy there but krishna has given him independence and he when he misuses then my at once comes and throws it out from krishna very far away and then gets these two bodies cross and shuttle two bodies and then he thinks that oh i am of this body and the happiness and the suffering of body oh things mine but really when we will go forward we will see there is no bandhan there there is really no mukti jeevit mukt always but he thinks like that and without the mercy of krishna without mercy of first guru we cannot come out of this and jar sarga the creation of this jar he like mrtika for sagni then water and then mrtika with the earth earth is there but if you make jar colors picture you can bring water from that and if that is not given in foil if you will bring then nothing will come understand yeah. so <coughs> from earth so many things in this world oh this is also earth prominent earth in what we see in this world earth is prominent so there is water fire and all other things but less this this is most but by the achinta shakti power of krishna sometimes they are nashwa perishable hmm? perishable perishable but they appear like or satya real permanent permanent like permanent ंग वाटर वॉट विल बी but if it is given in for and it is now reddish like oh then you can but really it is a comparison comparison for this that from earth earth so many parts oh you know uh, रत्ना जे गोल्ड कॉपर ऑल आर फ्रॉम अर्थ कोयला कोयला मीन्स गोल्ड ऑल आर फ्रॉम अर्थ सो दिस इज द एग्जांपल ऑफ दिस क्रिएशन माया माया क्रिएशन कृष्ण 
He is doing everything in super, uh, transcendental world. Also in Jeev Shakti. Also here by His Shakti. Uh, but even He is separate from Him. There is some existence. Krishna. And he is very lovely, very sweet. Attractive. He has a very attractive, his beautiful forms. And where? In Go Vrindavan. That Paramasatya, Satyam Parama Dhimahi. That Krishna, with his Sarp Shakti, Kaya Hop Shakti, he is always there and sometimes manifest in this world. So, Vyas Dev is doing pranam, Satyam Parma Dhimahi, like this. Is. Today, I am finishing here. I will explain more daily, daily. Though this subject is so deep, deep but you should try to hear. If you will take a bath, all water goes down. No. But something comes. No. Something will come. And that will be enough for you. Thank you. And in this creation, there are several things. And that is from earth. So we should not think that all are different. From one chit, jiva shakti, um, maya shakti, for this example. Now, Nanda um, Nanda Gopal Prabhu will speak something, a school and Subal Sakha. No, today not drama. Where is Prabhu? How to use to speak? Hare Krishna. Thank you all so much for coming to this wonderful 10th annual festival in New Braj, Dham. And so much thanks for to Srila Gurudev, who has come to give so much. So we have two things to uh, make some announcements, some very special opportunities uh, to help with the Sangha here with many different projects that Sri Gurudev has inspired. Uh, two tonight especially, one being the uh, new Broad School and the other a special program for a new uh, distribution of Srila Gurudev's books. Very prominent opportunities for devotees to help and participate in. So we wanted to make this announcement to you in front of Srila Gurudev and all the assembled Vaishnavas. Now, under the inspiration and order of Srila Gurudev, we've had a school here in New Braj for eight years. At first it wasn't so easy, but Srila Gurudev said to Virginia Nandan through, I wanted a school there in New Braj. And in many places all over the whole world, Gurudev has asked the same thing. But here in New Braj, one very special school was started about eight years ago, and it has been very successful, and it's been continuing to grow. Louder. Louder? At this time, we've, we've hit a few uh, roadblocks. There are so many students, and so many, we have um, a need to expand and have a bigger site to take care of the children properly and to educate them. And also, we have many qualified teachers now to take care of those students. 
Unfortunately, there are very, there's a great shortage of funds of Lakshmi to help take care of this. So a new opportunity has come where all of you can help simply by joining up with a program, which in one minute here, Subal Saka Prabhu will explain to you. <coughs> it is by his great fortune, the great fortune that he found out about this program. His children were uh, in a school up in the Bay Area, and they were asked to donate to a pro to join a program where they could simply buy things, and a portion of that money would go directly to the school. And he was just about to sign up for that, and then he thought. Oh, what about our school in New Braj? <laughs> so he began to investigate that. He spoke with myself, Brajendranandan Prabhu, and also to Brajanath Prabhu. And we all encouraged him, and he's done that and put it together. And he will explain how you can help in this way very easily, very painlessly. You can join this and help the New Braj school. And then after that, we'll hear from Budar Prabhu. And Bhagawat Prabhu about some other programs where you can help with Navadweep uh, Navadwe projects for our mat there and also in the book distribution program. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So by Gurudev's mercy, this, uh, this uh, program has become possible. There are two programs and as Anand Gopal Prabhu said, it's very painless. The first program is a merchant program where uh, there are many stores that have signed up for this program. Uh, stores like Safeway and airlines like American Airlines and uh, car rental places. So if you go and you, for example, you go to Safeway and you spend some money, Safeway automatically will send a percent of what you spend to the school and you're not paying anything extra for that. So it's, uh, it's a very good opportunity for uh, us to raise capital if many people sign up for this program and actually use it, then uh, the potential is very good. So there's two programs. The first program is very simple. You sign up with your existing have a booth. So please stop by and sign up. It takes five minutes to sign up. Please do that right away. Our goal is to get 1,000 people to sign up in Gurudev's US tour, US tour. So please help with that. Sign up yourself and get everything to sign up. And our goal for the end of the year is to get 2,000 people to sign up. So please help with that also. Thank you, Prabhu. We're also, my daughters and others are going to go around and we'll distribute forms and give you all one. And also there is a table here where during the day there are different baked goods, pizzas, and other things where you can come. Anything you buy there is a donation directly for the school. You can also personally donate, but this program is very powerful because without even thinking, you can automatically be giving to the school and helping to serve in that way. But we'll distribute the forms and also once you go home, you can tell your friends about this wonderful program and they can also sign up. And literally thousands of devotees can sign up for this program all over the country. And then it can be a model to help establish this program for other schools all around the country and the world. Okay, thank you. And now Pudar Prabhu will explain about the program for our new book distribution program. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna, one last thing about the credit card program. If 1,000 devotees were to sign up and, and get a credit card, and you spent approximately $200 a month, which on average I think most people do that type of spending, maybe not all the devotees, but... Uh, just to give you an idea of the amount of money that the school could earn, a thousand people spending about two thousand dollars a year would earn for the school about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So whether you spend, you know, a hundred dollars a year or whether you spend thousands of dollars a year, whatever you spend, a fraction of that goes to the school. Rajendra Nanda Prabhu is quite a holy person, quite a saintly man, and he's dedicated his life to these children. <laughs> Gur Gurudev is practically his, his rock of support, and he's been behind him entirely. And this is our way, uh, a very painless way of supporting him. So if you need a credit card, if you need more credit, go get one. <laughs> Um, buy your tickets yeah. to Karti. Buy Karti. Yes, buy your tickets for Karti with this credit card. Um, 
it seems that Gurudev continues to make history, and this is a, a very unusual thing I'm going to announce, because many of us uh, as devotees have experienced distributing books. Uh, some of us originally were just book distributors, some of us distributed some books, some of us even now uh, make our, our livelihood by distributing books. There aren't that many of us that do that, but uh, most of us have some experience of distributing books. We've heard from devotees who do distribute books that, you know, it is difficult at times. Uh, there's an economic aspect to it. You have to give a book to uh, someone and earn a certain amount of money to pay for it. So, Gurudev has come up with a very special plan, an extraordinary plan, and I'm going to just try and convey how extraordinary it is to you in very few words. In order to make book distribution very, very simple, so easy that you can take a book and practically give a, one book a day at least to a way, even just a way, to someone that you meet on the street, a friend, a family member, a, co a, a, a colleague at work, or whatever, Srila Gurudev himself is funding the availability of these books to you, the only thing that you pay for is the cost that Srila Gurudev is paying to the printer. What that means is all of the related costs for the production of a book, the editing, the uh, shipping, the storage, the design, uh, all of these things you're not paying for anything. What to speak of Gurudev's you know, um, amazing effort. Uh, he spoke earlier this evening about the deep considerations that our Acharya is making, writing these books and making them available to us. Srila Gurudev is working nonstop to make more and more transcendental books available to us. On average now, Srila Gurudev's books are available to you for the amazing price of 35 cents a book. On average, okay, that means from a few cents to roughly about a couple of dollars, these books are now available to you in a special type of package, especially for devotees who want to, let's say, make a commitment to distribute books. And I'll very quickly give you an idea of how it works. A startup kit, which is a selection of about uh, eight different titles, you can get a startup kit for $39 only, just $39. Someone told me that in America that's the price of a large pizza with all the toppings. <laughs> okay, so for the price of a pizza, you can get, you can get 117 books. 117 books. If you're a big distributor, for $300, you can get 1,200 books. Okay, now what this means is that what you pay for, you can then sell at very reasonable rates to anyone that you meet. I mean, you can almost just give the book away if you want to, or you can sell them and get five, six, seven times more than what you're paying for. it. If you want to use some of that money for yourself, if you want to just give Gurudev, back the money for printing more books or for building the Navadvi project. Whatever you decide to do, that's up to you. The main thing is that there's now no more, let's say, material reason why all of us shouldn't be distributing books. It's very, very simple. All you have to do is have a few books in your pocket, make it part of your sadhana. Make it part, you know, make it your commitment to your, to your Takurji that you're, any person you meet, at least one person a day, you're going to take out one of these books and, and just give it to them. If you can get something from them, all the better. Vishwambar Prabhu is the brain behind this program, and there are many, many devotees who've contributed to uh, this being uh, available, of course. We have so many, too few, uh, too many to mention. Jamrani, Didi, Shanti, uh, editors, uh, designers, so many are giving their, their great effort and sweat to this, what to speak of Gurudev, 
If we could reciprocate with them, if everyone here could just go down there and sign up for $39 worth of books, if you, ha if you have the facility for more, all the better. We take credit cards. <laughs> so if you get a credit card from us, then you can buy some more books. You get the credit card on the school program. Great, great. We have Spanish books, Hindi books. Um, you can even create your own selection of the books. If you don't like the prepackaged selections which have been made for you, you can select the types of books that you want. The only thing that we ask is a minimum order of $100. So really no reason now to not distribute books. Let's be merciful, let's be generous, and let's reciprocate with Gurudev who's making these books available. Let's show, show him our love and affection by sharing his love and affection with everyone that we come in touch with. Go Prebhanandi Haribo! Vishwam Barpabu, give two words. We'll be sure to do a credit check on you. <laughs> Okay. okay, here's our Bhagavad Prabhu to tell about his Abhadali project. Hare Krishna. Srila Guru Deva Ki. We have uh, a little something that we're doing here to try and raise some money for the Navadvi project. Well, uh, what, what I've done, Srila Guru Deva ordered me, he said, uh, I want you to raise some funds for Navadweep. I'm going to bless you. He told me this at Kartik that you can raise funds for the Navadweep project. So I was trying to figure out a way that I could do this, and I wanted to make imprints of his feet, but he didn't want to do that. He said, that's only for Mahaprabhu and Krishna. So then he told me here in California that I should come up with some wooden sandals. And then he put his feet in the sandals, and we could then sell these very wonderful sandals for a donation to give to Mayapur, to uh, Navadri. So I thought, where am I going to find wooden sandals in California? So lo and behold, I was praying that Krishna, you please help me, and I was staying at some devotee's house here in Los Angeles in California, 